God bless all of those that are striving in the Lord. This is Sister Liberty, and I'm back with another teaching for you. So I wanted to continue talking about what we discussed the last time we met. We talked about the importance of the Word of God and how vital it is that we not just have the Word of God as, you know, some pretty literature you know, just a a book of inspiration, but that we actually apply it in our lives, that we we take it, we eat it, we become it, we mirror it. It's vital that we do that. And so I wanted to continue talking about that because there were a lot of things that I wanted to mention that I didn't mention of how it is important that you actually read your Bible. Most people have a Bible, but never pick it up or they don't have the understanding of what is talking about it. I do understand that most churches, most pastors, they they don't encourage their congregations to read the Bible, to read the word, to meditate on it. And you need you need the word of God. It is meat. It is daily bread. And so just like you need physical food to survive, to sustain you, to keep you, you need the word of God. We need the word of God. We need it. Sometimes we don't realize that we need it to the degree that we need it until we begin to apply it and we, we we see the effects, we see the changes in our lives, we see the manifestation of what we read about happening in our lives. And so we understand that we need this book more than we know it. I need it. I need to be able to understand how I fight my battles and what I need in order to go forward. I need the word of God. The word of God is a lie. The word of God is a weapon. It is a sword. And when I use my sword, then I can fight the right way. There is a right way that you and I must fight. And we can have a sword, but what good is it to have a weapon? What good is it to have a sword if I don't know how to use it? Again, you can give a gun to a person. You can give a bow and arrow to a person, but if that person If they don't know how to use that thing the right way, then they're going to cause some damage. (laughs) They're going to cause some destruction. So most people, you know, when it comes to a weapon, the individual has to first learn how to use the weapon. They have to learn how to handle the weapon. They have to study the weapon. Hey, you can't just shoot this just because it seems like a good idea or just because you've played some video game. You have to learn how to use it. And so when it comes to the word of God, we have to know how to apply it in the right way because there are many people who do know scripture. You know, there are people who I've come across who know the word of God better than me, but they don't have the power to apply it in their lives. That's what I'm saying. We can know the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, but if I am not applying the word of God, if I am not using the sword on me, you know, first, then what good is it? to just know the word of God. I need to apply it. It needs to be manifested in my life. And so it's important that we not just read it, but that we take it because it stabilizes us. The word of God stabilizes us. Jesus says that when we are doers of the word and not just hearers of the word, then he compares us to someone who builds his house upon the rock. And he says that this person is stable. This person is not easily moved and not easily shaken. When the troubles of life happen, when adversity comes, when opposition comes, when life circumstances come that you either were not prepared for or that you were prepared for, then when you have the word of God, when you default to the word of God, then in those most critical moments and circumstances, you can actually stand. You have something to lean on. You have something to fall back on because you already know, you know, where your help comes from. You know that your help comes from God. You know that it's his word that keeps you. You know that it's his word that you fall back on. And so you default to it when things rises up that's unexpected you don't just default to the things of the world you know you don't turn to drinking just because things are hard and you know you don't know how to navigate through your problems you don't know how to go through your problems and so you may want to drink yourself away you may want to smoke you may want to fornicate you may want to do bad things and the lord is teaching us that all we need is his word 
Everything that we need is founded in his word. If we need peace, that is in the word of God. If we need joy, that is in the word of God. If we need understanding or wisdom or knowledge or wanting to know how to be more humble, wanting to know how to serve, how to have a heart of servitude, it is in the word. Wanting to know how to forgive, how to overcome, how to get over self, you know, how to love God more. It is all in the word of God. Yeah, learning to forgive people and learning how to ask for forgiveness, learning how to deal with anxiety and depression and discouragement, learning how to deal with the spirit of confusion, learning how to deal with the powers of witchcraft, learning how to deal with the wars that are on the inside. It is all in the word of God. We need the word of God. It is alive. It is flesh. It is meat indeed. But what happens when we are born again believers, we are Christians and we go to church, but our pastor is your leader. You know, the person that's over you may not be encouraging you to read the word of God. I did not know that I was supposed to be reading the word of God for myself until I came up under the pastor that I am under now. I did not know that. I didn't know. I thought reading the word of God was only for when you went to church and the pastor has you open the Bible and, you know, everybody's searching for the scripture. (laughs) And, you know, that's not everybody's story. Because I I have come across individuals before I came into the faith who read the word of God and they knew the word of God. But most of the time, you know, the Bible is only open when you go to church because that's the time where the Bible is used. The Bible is needed. It's at church. I didn't know that reading the word of God was a part of my lifestyle and how vital and how important it would become in my life. How much more I really needed it. Like... You know, the more you read the word of God, the more you draw closer to the one it's about, your maker, your creator, your husband, your heavenly father. Because the word of God tells us about God. It tells us how God works. It tells us how God operates, who God is. If you want to get closer to God, you know, apart from praying and seeking him, you need to read his word because his word is going to tell you who you are. The word of God tells you about you. It tells you about the nature of men and how sinful man is and how the imaginations of man's heart is evil continually. You you need the word of God to edify you, to, to sharpen you, to mold you, to offend those areas in your heart that are still underdeveloped, that are still not yet sanctified and purified. You, you need the Bible. You need God's word to shape you and to mold you because That's what it is. It it shapes and it it molds. It cuts. It separates. It separates the good from the the bad, the the light from the darkness. And so you need it. And so I didn't realize how closer it was going to draw me when I would read it, when I would read it. And so I didn't know that reading the word of God was something you did as a lifestyle. I just thought it was something that you did in church. And so because most believe, you know, the Bible is just something that you do when you go into the house of God. They're not being taught that they have to read the Bible for themselves. You need to know what's in it because how else can you know whether or not the person who is delivering the message to you is preaching sound doctrine? How else can you know If they're even telling you the truth, if they're not mixing it with something else or, you know, something from history, you you need to know who's feeding you. You need to know and you know who's feeding you because you're already eating. You're already studying the word of God for yourself. And so you're going to know whether or not this person has the spirit of God. You're going to know whether or not this person is giving you sound doctrine, truth. You're going to know if it's true. You're going to know whether or not it's this or if it's that, if it's error, if it's mix and mingle with something else, you're going to know because you're already a person who studies the Bible. You're already familiar with what's in the word of God. That's why we need to know. Because when I go to church, I need to make sure that what my pastor is preaching is coming from the word of God. If it's not coming from the word of God, I need to know. But how can I know if I'm not reading the word of God for myself? That means that people can come to you with, with another doctrine. People can come to you with another gospel because you don't know the word of God for yourself. You don't know what's in it. You need to know God for yourself. This is where that whole having a personal relationship with God can come in at. Right here in the word of God. You're not expecting someone else to read it for you. You're not expecting to only 
get the word of God when you go to church. It's supposed to be a lifestyle. You are responsible for knowing God for yourself. And that comes through reading his word. And if you don't understand it, ask the Holy Spirit for understanding. He has to unlock that understanding because understanding is a gift. Understanding doesn't come just by simply you picking up the word of God. Because again, it's not some magical enchantment kind of book, some William Shakespeare kind of literature. The Holy Spirit has to unlock the understanding so that when you do pick up the Bible, you can actually understand what it's saying. And as the Lord gives you the understanding, then you can begin to apply it in your life and you can see how vital it is. And so you're not waiting to go to church and to the house of God to hear the word of God. You're not waiting to say, well, I read the word of God today at church. No, it has to become your lifestyle. You're not just taking the word of God as a, a magical kind of book, but you're taking it as meat, as, it, as, as if it was your daily bread. This is your daily bread. You need this to survive. You need this to fight your battles, to fight the right way, to continue plowing through. You need it. Everything that you will ever go through, all the answers are in the manual. All the answers are in the book of instruction. This is instructions on how to live your life. God gives us many different examples of other men and women of God who have gone through this life, many of them have experienced what you and I have experienced, minus the, you know, the, the electronic devices, you know, minus that they've experienced what you and I have and they've, they've made it through, they've endured, they did not give up. They did not throw in the towel, they did not drop out of the race, they continued, they walked with God, they walked with God, they lived for God, they loved God. And we have, we have greater than what they have because now we have a whole book. They didn't have a Bible back then. They had the word of God, but the word of God was very precious in those days because they did not have what we have. We have a book that many times, honestly, we take for granted because we know that it's there. We know that it's there, but there's going to come a time where, you know, the word of God is going to be like a drought. It's going to be like a drought. You're not going to have access to it so readily, so easily as we do now because we take it for granted. And the Lord is saying that, you know, this this is a very critical time of his word. We take the word of God to meditate on it, to apply it to our lives, to understand how God sees us and to understand how we are in our sinful state. What does the Bible say about your heart? The word of God tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. What does the Bible say about the mind? The mind is enmity against God and that we need to take on the mind of Christ and that we need our minds to be renewed. What does the, the Bible say about the soul? That, you know, in you dwells no good thing. There are so many different things that stems from your soul and we need the daily washing. We need the daily cleansing. Just like you need a physical bath every single day because you get dirty, even when you don't think that you're dirty. You may say, but I only went to work and I was, I was indoors all day, but I only went here. I only went to the grocery store. You need a bath. You need a daily cleansing because as you go out, your body is designed to pick up things. And so although you may not have physically been in the dirt, you may not have physically been outdoors, your Bible, your, not your Bible, your body attracts dirt. Your body attracts things from the atmosphere. And so things will cleave to your skin. If you were to take a microscope or a, maybe not a telescope, but yeah, a microscope or a magnifying glass and put it to your skin, you would see all kinds of things. You would not be able to handle it. You would see all kinds of bacteria, good bacteria, bad bacteria and so just as you need a daily washing a daily cleansing you know you need sanctification your body needs sanctification you need that spiritually you need your mind to be washed you need your mind to be renewed you need the lord to wash away your impurities to wash away your imperfection to wash away the things that are in your heart, the things that are in your soul, the things that you are governed by, the the different generational curses and the different mindsets that you've taken up in the world, things that you've heard throughout your day. You need your mind, you need your body to be washed daily. And that comes from the word of God. Psalms is a really good book to wash yourself. Proverbs is a really good book to wash yourself. If you need wisdom, Proverbs is one of those books. Yes, he tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts 
and to lean not on to our own understanding. In all of our ways, acknowledge God and he will direct your path. Your path, excuse me, your path can be ordered. Your steps can be ordered. Your daily guidance can be ordered by God. He can He can guide you on, on how your day should go and how it should look. Yeah. Lean on his understanding. You know, take off the old perspective. Take off the old man and put on Christ. The word of God is alive. It's a book that I'm grateful for because when I need help from the sanctuary, when I need help in the time of trouble, in the times of adversity, I know that I can find peace in the word of God. I know that when I am feeling alone, I can remind myself of the word of God. I can remind myself where Jesus says that, you know, I will not leave you comfortless. I am with you even to the end of time. I, I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will not suffer you to be tempted more than you are able. He says that I'm right there with you. He says, I will give you my yoke and my burdens for they are easy and they are light. He says, I will give your soul rest. And so I can know that I can come, come back the thoughts in my mind that are coming from the inside, but also from the outside. He'll give you power to overcome your world on the inside so that you can overcome it on the outside. He'll give you the necessary weapons. He'll give you the necessary tools so that you can overcome what's happening on the inside. What's happening on the inside is war. That's what Paul says. Wars come from the inside. There's a whole war going on on the inside. How do you overcome that? How do you fight what's happening on the inside? Because you have your heart, you have your soul, you have your mind, you have emotions, you have feelings, you have all kinds of things. You have experiences to where you've experienced things. And so your body holds trauma, your body holds memory. And every now and then certain thoughts come back, certain things from your past come back. And so God gives us his word so that we can know how to overcome those things, so that we can know how to silence those voices on the inside, how to, you know, go against those thoughts from the past that, that make you feel condemned, that makes you feel bad, that makes you feel shameful. There are scriptures in the word of God that will make those emotions leave, that will make those emotions go, that will make those lies in your soul be still and be silent. But you have to put forth the effort in actually reading the word of God. People take it for granted. People don't understand that the reason why most people are not stable when it comes to their walk in Christ is Is because they're not productive. Most people are lazy. Most people don't read their word. Most people don't read their word and then they want to tell you things like don't judge or, you know, don't tell nobody what love looks like. You know, love, you know, love looks different. Love is free. Love is all kinds of things. You know, they're going to be able to tell you that. And those are the ones that are easily deceived because they don't know truth. They don't know what the word of God really says. Yeah, this person just came to you with another gospel and another doctrine. And Paul says, if anybody comes to you with another doctrine, another curse, something else, let him be a curse. Yeah, the word of God is true. It's sound. It's sound. It's going to be a light unto your feet. What is it? A lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. The word of God. Yeah, it's a light. It exposes the darkness. It exposes those hidden things. And so he says that if anybody comes to you with any other thing, let them be a curse. You have to know what's in the word of God so that when people do come to you with something, you know what's truth and what's not. You know how to test the spirits and you know how to discern things because you have the word of God. It's written upon the tables of your heart. It's embedded in you. That's what you need. You need to become one with it. It's supposed to be a mirror. You're supposed to see yourself. When you see the word of God, you're supposed to see you. And when you're outside of the will of God, you're supposed to perceive that. You're supposed to have the discernment to know, man, I'm out of the will of God. I'm out of the way of the Lord. I need to get back in line. I need the word of God. When anger starts rising up, frustration, when you're irritable, play the word of God. Play the word of God. Read the word of God. Speak it over yourself. When your thoughts begin to rise up and go against you, and tell you that you don't need God, you don't need church, you don't need the Bible, then you have to begin to pick up the word of God and read it out loud. When your atmosphere is shaky and rocky and there's some turbulence, you know, spirit of confrontation is in the atmosphere, 
or aggression and you know that argumentative spirit then you have to begin to read the word of god or play the word of god and shift some things when you're at work and your co-workers want to be worldly and they want to be perverted and now you're being attacked you're being affected your thoughts are thinking about old school music and old school things that's an opportunity for you to apply the word of God, to quote the word of God. You may not be able to have a Bible. Maybe you work at a place where you say, Sister Liberty, what if you can't? Have, what if I can't have my Bible? What if I work at a place where they don't allow me to have the word of God? Well, that's where you, that's where memorizing scriptures play a role in. You know, you begin to just quote the word of God. Yeah. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I know that if I submit myself to God, resist the devil, then he has to flee. Yeah. You can quote things like James. James 1 verse 9. Wherefore, my beloved, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. You can begin to actually apply the word of God in your life. Yeah, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus tells me to love my enemies. Bless those that curse me. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Yeah. I'm telling you, the word of God will sustain you in the most critical times, the most vital times where you feel as though you're about to walk away. You're about to give up. And then you remember what God's word, you remember his promises. This is why it's important to remember the promises of God, things that he's made to you. And I. he says in Revelation that if we overcome, then we're going to receive a crown of life that's not corruptible. It's incorruptible. Paul says that those here in this life who they live to gain something in this life, he says they are striving to obtain a crown that's corruptible, something that's going to break break down, something that's going to over time dissolve. It's going to vanish away. But he says the sons of God, we we press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus for a crown that never rusts. It never breaks down. It never fades away. It's incorruptible. Yeah. It's eternal. It's eternal. This is what we're striving for. This is what we're looking forward to. That's why I need the word of God in my life because it shapes my heart. When I speak it, it's shaping my atmosphere. It's shaping my mind. It's renewing my mind. I can't tell you how many times I've been bombarded with thoughts and I just begin to speak the word of God out of my mouth. You know, you know, your words are speak are, are quicker than actually picking up the word of God. And so when I quote what's in it, then things begin to to take shape and root in my atmosphere. When I'm dealing with those thoughts, I just quote what it says in what is it, first Corinthians ten? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I have to cast that all down. Casting down imaginations, because you know my our minds do things. Casting down imaginations. And bringing everything, bringing every high thing into the knowledge of Christ. Oh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Casting down imagination in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge on disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Yeah, there are many different scriptures in here that we can use to... Combat the thoughts in our world. To combat the lies of the enemy in our world. To go against what's happening on the inside. 1 Corinthians 10 says, There has no temptation taken you, but such that is common to man. It says, But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above than you are, that you are able. But with the temptation, he makes a way of escape. When you feel as though nobody understands what you're going through, nobody has taken a mile in your shoe, nobody knows, nobody is going through what you're going through, he says that there is no temptation. There is nothing that you are going through that is not common. Meaning, you're not the only one going through this. You're not the only one who has had to undergo those emotions. Someone else has had to go through this, probably worse. And so they know what it feels like. They've undergone the, the emotions and the feelings. And so you're not alone. He says that he always makes a way of escape. He's faithful. He's not going to allow you to go through more than what you can handle. I'm telling you. The word of God will save you. 
He is a stronghold in the day of trouble. He's a strong tower. The word of God says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous, they run into it and they're saved. Yeah, he's a strong tower. You got to know where to go in a time of trouble. You don't run to the world. You don't run to the things of the world. You run to God. You run to God's word because you know that God's word is true. You know that God's word is alive. You know that God's word is going to never fail you. And you know what's special? I can keep going back to the same scripture over and over and over. And every time I do it, be new. Meaning the word of God never gets old. It never stops working. It's new every time. It's fresh every time. Although you've quoted this scripture every day this week, when you use it again, it's going to be just as effective. It's going to be just as powerful because that's what it does. It's active. It's alive. It's sharp. It's powerful. It's fresh. It's good. It never gets old. And so you can never get tired of using it. You can never get tired of applying it and quoting it because Every time you cook that thing out of your mouth, there's power being released with it because there's power on the words. God spoke his word. God spoke his word. Whenever God speaks, that's life. That's instruction. You have to be listening. Whenever God is speaking, you have to be listening. When God is speaking through his word, you have to be listening. You have to be open. It's amazing to me how people have access to the word of God. But yet their lives are not changing their lives. How is it that, you know, God, you go to church and you have access to his word, yet your life is not changing. The word of God is supposed to be shaping your life. It's supposed to be shaping your life. You're not reading it for pretty literature. You're reading it because you're supposed to be mirroring the word of God. You're supposed to be seeing you. It's a lie. The word of God is a lie. It's alive. There's so much power behind it. It's such, matter of fact, the Bible is the most powerful book on the planet with 100% evidence of prophecy, meaning this Bible, this book has foretold things that have, that have come to pass. Everything in it so far, there are still things that have not yet come to pass. I guess what I'm saying is that things that has been spoken in times past has come to pass. Some things have not yet manifested, but many things have. Many things have. Yeah. It foretold things that has happened. The right just as it said it has happened 100%. Yeah, the accuracy of the word of God is is so precise that you can't deny that the things in it are are not true. You can't deny it. You can't deny it. Yeah, people can't deny the word of God because the word of God is is truth in itself. You don't make it true. It's already true. It's already true. Everything that we need is here. We just have to put forth the effort to apply it to our lives, to read it, to memorize it. The Lord told Joshua that this book of the law will not depart out of your mouth. You're going to meditate on it day and night. You have to meditate on the word of God day and night. It is a lamp. It is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. It's going to guide you. It's going to teach you how to navigate through this life that seems so hard. How do I get through life? Is suicide the way out? No. The word of God is going to teach you how you should be. Yeah. It's going to teach you how you should be and how you should train up your kids. It's going to teach you how you ought to engage people, how you ought to love people, how you ought to serve people, how you ought to forgive people. It's going to teach you that. How you ought to engage God when you go into the house of the Lord. Keep yourself, keep your feet, be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifices of fools. Yeah, it's going to teach you how to be, how to be a good son, how to love God, how to overcome your world on the inside and the outside is going to teach you. We are grateful for the word of God and we don't take it for granted because there will come a time. There will be, there will come a time where you won't have access to it. It's going to be taken from you. And then you, you're going to realize just how precious it is. You know, there are nations right now who the, the Christians that are there, they cannot even have the Bible. Some of, some of the nations, they can't have the Bible. They have to sneak and read the Bible. But, you know, here in America, we take it for granted because we don't know how precious it is and how, how much we really need it. I need it. It gets me through my day, the word of God. You know, many times when I'm at work, you know, just to keep this flesh under control, I just play the word of God to keep my mind just saturated in God's presence 
you know, just to keep my mind focused on where it needs to be. Because at any given moment, it can just drift away. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, the days that we're living in are getting darker. People are dealing with all kinds of things. And they don't know that the solution is right here. They don't know that the word of God is just right here. It's available. And we do have to understand that Jesus Christ, he is the word. He is the word. He is the word of God. When we read the word of God, when we take in the word of God, we are taking in Christ. We are taking in Christ. We are taking on Christ. We take on the mind of God, but we have to believe his word. You know that you believe the word of God when you apply it in your life and you make the necessary changes. You believe this because you you applied it in that way. No, I believe the word of God and so I'm going to do what it says. That's how you know that you believe it. That's how I know I believe what this book is saying. Doubt will tell me otherwise, but faith tells me that no. The things of God, the word of God says that Everything that we do see came from the things that we cannot see. Faith is a substance, the evidence of things that are unseen. Faith tells me that when I read this book, it's not going to be in vain. Faith tells me that the words on the pages of this book are powerful and they're active, they're alive. And that when I apply it to my life, when I apply it to my atmosphere, then the atmosphere will take shape and hold of what I release through my mouth by the word of God. That's what faith tells me. Unbelief is going to tell me otherwise that it's just a book. And so we need to understand the importance of why we need God's word. It's supposed to be you. It's supposed to be you. It's going to mold and shape you. I'm telling you. I'm grateful for the word of God because when I need help from the sanctuary, I may not be able to, you know, have a physical person with me to encourage me. David had to encourage himself in the Lord. There are times where you just have to encourage yourself in the Lord. You can't wait for someone to do it. You can't sit around and, and wallow in your mess and wait for someone to come and encourage you. You have the power. You have the resources. You have the tools. You have the weapon. You have everything that you need to go forward. A just man falls seven times, but he gets back up. He's someone who is founded upon the rock. He already knows where his help comes from. He already knows who his God is, who his shield is, who his buckler is. He already knows that if he dwells in the secret place of the most high, then he's going to abide under the shadow of the Lord, of the almighty God. He already, he already knows that God is the one that sustains him and keeps him. He already knows. He, all, he already understands who God is. God is a present help in the time of trouble. He already understands that. This has to be who we are. This has to be our life. I cannot be a Christian and not be one who reads the word and applies the word. I'm not just reading it again, but I'm doing what it says. I'm living a life of what the Bible tells me how I should be living. Because again, the words on this page on, on these pages come from God. These are God breathed. All scripture are given by the interpretation of, of the Spirit of God. They're God breathed. And it's useful. The word of God is useful. Now, I'm looking now because I'm looking at my Bible. I got to become one with this Bible. I have to become one with it. I have to keep it close to me. It has to be written upon the tables of my heart. It's God breathe. God breathe on these words. Do you realize how close God is? The fact that we have his word and we're not taking it as just some, some literature, but we're, we're taking it as, as it is. All like as as if it is alive because it is alive. We're taking it as that. Jesus. I can't tell you all how grateful I am for the word of God and how there has been many different situations where I went to the word of God or where you know I have scriptures all around my desk because when I'm being overwhelmed, when my mind is being bombarded, when I'm being attacked suddenly. I have what I need. It's almost like medicine. I have what I need. I could just look up and just begin to meditate on a verse or hold on to something or begin to quote it and reiterate it, you know, repeat it until that thought goes. You know, sometimes you have to repeat 
that scripture more than once until it leaves. You may say, well, I quoted the verse and the emotion didn't leave or the feeling didn't leave. Sometimes you have to quote it until that thing goes because repetition deepens the impact. The more you hammer that thing, it'll break. The word of God is a hammer. The more you put a hammer to that thought, a hammer to that emotion, a hammer to that feeling, a hammer to that aggression, a hammer to that anger, a hammer to that lust, that thing will break. It will break off your atmosphere. It will break off. Apply pressure. Apply the hammer to that to that thing. It'll break off because the word of God is alive. And so that is my encouragement to you today. May God give you the ears to hear this message in Jesus' name.